Okay, so today I want to talk about regular expressions. Now a regular expression at its most simple is just pattern matching. You have a bunch of text, you're looking to see if some character or some combination of characters exists inside of that text. You're looking to match a phone number, a social insurance number, uh, an address. You're looking for some sort of match. That's what a regular expression is used for. It defines the pattern that you're looking for. So there's a bunch of special characters and special syntax. I'm going to go through that here. Uh, the link to this text file uh, as a code gist is down inside the description. If you want to download it, have your own copy of it. And then we're going to look at a few examples just to make sure these all make sense. So just a quick sort of summary of some of the more common things that you get in regular expressions. This isn't an exhaustive list, but it'll give you most of the stuff that you'll need. So if you see an asterisk inside of a pattern, that means that whatever came in front of it will be inside of a set of round brackets or square brackets, the parentheses or square brackets. If the asterisk comes after that, it means that you're looking for zero or more matches of what was inside those. If it's a plus sign, it's one or more question mark, zero or one matches. Uh, if you see the little caret character, this one right here, this means if it's at the beginning of the pattern, it means match this at the start of the string. So the pattern has to be at the beginning of whatever the string or the line of text is. The same thing with the dollar sign, it's at the end of the string or the end of the line. So your pattern has to be at the end of the text. If something starts with a slash, this means it's some sort of escape sequence. So if I needed to put in um, a backslash character, I can't just write a backslash, I'd have to do backslash backslash. If I wanted to match against an asterisk, like these special characters right here, if I wanted to use those as part of the pattern, then I'd have to put a backslash in front of them. So backslash dollar sign or bas backslash asterisk, whatever the special character is you're looking to match. A period is another special character. It means match against any character whatsoever. One single character. Just period say, okay, this character could be anything. I don't care what it is. Um, round parentheses. This is a capturing group. So if you want to do uh, combinations of care, you can see it's going to be this or this or this. You can use the pipe character between as the or inside of here. And then these things can apply to this capturing group. Square brackets is a character set. So whatever I put inside of here, I'm looking for one character from that, unless I put a modifier on here to say, no, I'm looking for three of that. So you're looking for anything inside of here. Now we can use ranges. So lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, uh, zero to nine, or you can put whatever range you want. You can say, up, lowercase a to z or an uppercase f through m something like that that's the range that i'm looking for or the number zero through five so this would match against any of those possible things that fit in the range the caret character if it comes inside of here or inside of here we're saying it's not this it's a negation so anything except for these characters if the curly braces come after one of these character sets or the character capturing groups, if there's one number, it's an exact number of matches. So this thing has to happen one time or six times. One comma five, there's the minimum, there's the maximum number. One comma and then nothing, that's your minimum or comma and then a number, that's the maximum. And then there's some special backspace uh, escape sequences not backspace, backslash escape sequences. Um, lowercase s is for white space. Lowercase d is for digit. Lowercase w is any word character, which is any of the letters, 0 through 9, and the underscore. And these are the ASCII characters, by the way. Uh, word boundary. So you can see there's spaces or tabs, things that can be put in between words. Those are known as word boundaries. If this shows up inside of square brackets like this, it'll be treated as if this is the backspace character, not a word boundary. So just important to note that. Uh, whenever you get the capital version, it's just the negation. So capital S is non-white space, anything except white space. Capital D, anything except a digit, anything except a word character, anything except a word boundary. 
and then Unicode. If you want to provide the Unicode, you can go slash U and then the four digit hex value, which is the character code for that. Okay, so that's a very quick summary. Uh, like I said, you can download that from the link below. So let's do a couple of examples. We'll jump into here. Uh, regex101.com, great website for testing your patterns. So let's say that we've got this set of text, A and C, then with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 Bs in between. So different ways that we could match some of these. If I just said AC, you can see it's highlighting just the AC. That's the only thing that matched out of all of this. If I put ABC, now it only matches the second one, matches the third, the fourth, the fifth, so on. So it's an exact match. If I wanted to specify that, you know, the B inside of here, I want the A, I want the C, but the B inside, that can be zero or one matches. There's the question mark. This means zero or one. If I use a plus, it's one or more. So all of them except for the first one. And then the asterisk is zero or more. So it matches all of those. Um, same thing as putting the B here. We can use the period. Remember that matched any character whatsoever. Uh, we can say, I want to match anything here. Any one character inside of here, A, B, or C. And because I've got the flag on here for global, it means keep doing the pattern matching and find all of the matches. M is for multi-line, so I can do multi-line. That's why I have those two turned on. Okay, so ABC, any one of those characters, and it keeps going, so it's going to match against absolutely everything. If we said ABC followed by, as the second character, B, that means there's going to be A, B, or C followed by the letter B, those two things together. So A, B, A, B, A, B, 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 A, B, 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 these are matching. Wherever B is the second letter, where I've got two characters together and B is the second one, those are going to be matches. So the AB and the BB in this final one, the last two actually. Okay, so those are just some basic examples. Um, let's do one that's a little bit more practical. So I'm going to delete all this. There we go. All right, I'm going to try to match these addresses right here. This is a more practical example. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that a street address can be written. Starting with a number, there could be a letter that comes after it. There might be a hyphen between the number and the letter, or it could be an apartment number with a hyphen in this, or it could be an apartment number and a space in this. That's another one. So 14 space, one, two, three, Main Street. Sometimes people with the period at the end, sometimes they don't. So all of these, as a human, I can look at this and say, yeah, okay, I understand. Those are all possible valid addresses and I understand what they all mean. But to create a pattern that matches this, that can be a little bit more challenging. So let's start with the left-hand side. We're going to be starting with a number. So let's say it has to begin with this. So the very first thing on the line has to be a digit. Okay, so I've matched all of them. That first character, we've got a digit. Now I'm going to say we're going to allow up to seven digits. So anywhere from one digit up to seven digits at the very beginning. So all the stuff highlighted here, we've matched with all of that so far. Now gets a little bit more complicated. Following this, there could be a space or there could be a hyphen. Still thinking about just the numbers here. There could be a space or there could be a hyphen. So whenever we get into a situation where there's an or, well, I like to use the, the round parentheses is what we need to do. So space or a hyphen. Great. So there could be a space or a hyphen. So I picked up this space, this hyphen, this hyphen, this space, this space, this space, this space. Okay, but I've lost one here as well. This one didn't have a space. So let's say zero or one 
matches for that. And that was our question mark. There we go. Now we're back to having all of those. All right, following this, there could be potentially some letters or digits. So let's create another little grouping and we'll say zero or more. And it could be either a letter or a digit. And I'm missing my square bracket right there. Okay, so a character or a digit, one or more of those. Now, I don't have fractions in here. That will be another thing as well, but we'll just leave it at this for now. At this point, I've matched all those numbers and all the potential numbers or letters that can come after them. I'm also picking up some of the, the words, and that's okay. If we've got a little bit of extra, that's fine too. All right, now let's start looking at the street names. Now, street names could be one word, could be two, could be three. Sometimes you'll get like a, a saint. So there could be a period inside of there. And sometimes you get hyphens inside of words. Sometimes you get really long street names. There could be multiple words, multiple names inside of there. So we'll say there could be one to three words here. And then we're going to treat this part at the end, the street, road, crescent, avenue, all those things. We're going to treat those separately. So we're going to have another little pattern at the end where we do that. And it's just simply going to be a space. And then inside of here, we're going to say, okay, could be road, could be street, could be crescent, could be avenue. And you can list off a whole bunch more. And following them, period is a special character but I want the actual period, so I have to put the slash in front of it to say that potentially there could be one, but it is optional. So zero or one periods at the very end. All right, so we've got this part at the end with the period just back here. We just have to get the names. So inside of there, there will be a space in front of each one of these things. If it's multiple, there's always gonna be a space in front of it. So we'll start off with a space and then we'll give it all the possible letters and a potential for a hyphen there we go like that and optionally at the end so there's going to be multiple ones of that and then potentially at the end there could also be a period here too so we'll put an optional period inside of that. All right, so that looks pretty good for the pattern matching the word. The only issue is down here where we actually do have multiple words. The problem is we're not matching multiple ones. We're only matching one word that could end with an optional period. So numbers inside curly braces. So one, two, three, or we could say one to four possible words, and then the ending of the street, uh, what kind of street or road or crescent it is. And there we go. There is a pattern that we've developed to describe all these different possible written street addresses. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, I will have some more uh, videos coming up in the future where I talk about uh, the specific JavaScript uh, regular expression matching that you can do. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the flags when I do those methods as well. Um, but for now, that's the basics of regular expressions. And I encourage you to use this site, this reg, reg <laughs> regx101.com. Uh, great site for testing it. The color coding makes it really, really easy to see. Um, with JavaScript turned on right now, it just gives me the blue full match. If you use the PHP one, it will actually do color matching as well which makes it a little bit easier to see sometimes. All right, so that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.